Don in London, hello, June 13th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. Uh, my addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. Being in the right place with the right people, doing the right things or having the right things. Always wanting to be a part of and never quite sure whether I was fitting in, leading, following, you name it. Never quite sure of me. So if I couldn't be sure about me, how could you be sure about me? And how could I be sure I was in the right place anyway? So a lot of life uh, lived in fear, putting on a brave face and hoping I was getting it right. These days I know I don't have to get it right. All I need to do is be sober today, learn how to live life again a day at a time and see what happens, see what happens so that by the end of the day I'll know a little bit more about me who I am becoming. That's as simple as that. So these days I don't take a drink a day at a time. I don't feel like I have to fit in or please people or want to be something I'm not. I'm just me. And that's been the greatest gift to learn out, learn how I can be me. So my video is all about recovery. I, I am a part of and belong to a fellowship and that fellowship is Alcoholics Anonymous. I never speak for the fellowship, can't, won't, not inclined to. It's full of unique, authentic people who will speak about their recovery where they will. And they do, all over the place, but mainly they do it in the meetings of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. So why is it important to go to meetings? Simply, what we see is what we get. It's attraction, not promotion. And on some days, the attraction can be great and immense because we connect and we feel part of and some days we may not feel part of at all it's just the way we are and the meeting was on that particular day so I'm lucky I have the choice of many meetings here in London UK and it's not the same across the globe so like other people I share experience strength and hope of what's working for me either by video or just by writing in different places on the internet so what's on my mind today well before I say that uh, what follows is the daily reflections from AA and words from me from different years and then step six of the 12 step program. So today what's on my mind? Well, more will be revealed. Experience, strength and hope. When we wake up, in, when we, wake up we can ask ourselves, how am I feeling, why and what can I choose to do today? We can be open, honest and willing let go our expectations, be open to choices we have and simply be ourselves. So, open, honest and willing, how am I feeling? A bit knackered. Done a lot of different things over the weekend to do with improving my environment and what used to take me a couple of hours to do can take me a couple of days to do. Yeah, the passage of time. So I have to learn to pace myself in a different way. And I am also affected by type 1 diabetes, which I got from a virus in recovery. So I was along, around long enough to get other ailments. And this thing of how am I feeling, why, and what may I do, is understanding what my situation is. So the more I speak the truth to myself and to other people, either the more they can help me or not help me. And I can help myself or not hinder myself by trying to be something I'm not. It all works one day at a time. And then the next one, Living Amends, which is all part of Daily Reflections for today from the AA literature. Nobody is perfect. Today, sober, we can let go our anger and resentment towards ourselves for being human. In other words, the frustrations of life, passage of time, not being able to do what we quite used to be able to do realize we may be judging our fellows when we need only work on our own attitudes and actions. The living amend, sober and human sized, equal with humility. And the reason why it's important to me, if I get angry and resentful at myself for not being the person I used to be, my expectations are far too high for today. And what I tend to do these days is say to myself, well, if I have no expectations, other than to be sober and try and be truthful. The rest of the day can be quite a surprise and I don't need to be angry and resentful about anything. 
and that also applies to other people if I set high expectations for others like I used to do for myself I can find myself in the same boat expectations not met and then anger and resentment follows <coughs> so how do these steps work I always say to myself in the morning step one, powerless over alcohol and people, places and things I'm not here to control anything but I can make free choices based on what is happening the truth of what is happening now step two I can be restored to sanity on a daily basis when I can easily go mad at what's happening in the world and what can happen on my back doorstep too how people treat each other how people tend to misunderstand each other without finding out what really is going on and it's not for me to be an arbiter but I can make good choices about whether I include myself in something that's going on or say to myself that's none of my business steps in action means that I play my part in life with free choice and help other people as best I can so step one, step two, step three is let go and let good things happen or step three can be let go, understand the bad things that are going on and see how I may help in some way step four, my life story, I've done that and step five, shared it, yes so June is about step six and at the end of this video is the reading from the AA 12 steps and 12 traditions all about step six so before that daily reflections as it is in the big book not the big book the daily reflections hitting on step six because it is June and uh, some words from other years enough for today John in London hello my daily video all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour my addictive substance alcohol my behaviour to extremes of addiction out of proportion to reality often seeking to be fixing myself and these days one day at a time trying not to fix but to live life as it is today so I share here daily reflections this book from AA Alcoholics Anonymous this is just one voice you need to hear the voice of many in order to find out what will work for you in recovery and that is the beauty of fellowship we take what works and work with it so for June 13th living our amends years of living with an alcoholic is almost sure to make any life any wife or child neurotic the entire family is to some extent ill certainly impacted to extremes of behavior it is important for me to realize that as an alcoholic I not only hurt myself but also those around me making amends to my family and to the families of alcoholics still suffering will always be important understanding the havoc I created and trying to repair the destruction will be a lifelong endeavor the example of my sobriety may give others hope and faith to help themselves so it's a lifetime, lifetime endeavor done one day at a time so it's never too big to do it's day sized and right sized seeing the world as it is and what helps me when I'm suffering extremes of behavior and getting thirsty although that's happened less as time has gone on is the serenity prayer to God of good conscience of your understanding God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is just for today Don in London hello uh, it's June 13 2009 my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behavior my substance alcohol my behavior trying to be whatever you wanted me to be uh, trying to deal with life as best I could and part of my way of dealing with it was what I learned along the way from others around me including my father who also was an alcoholic although I really can't say that he would have had to say it but uh, he's no longer with us so he can't but he certainly had all the traits that I've got or maybe I just inherited them anyway for me drinking was about taking the edge off 
uh, celebrations and also sadness as well. So I drank when I was celebrating and felt happy, joyful. I also drank when I felt miserable, miserable and desolate. And I didn't realise that uh, not only can alcohol be classified as a poison if we take too much of it, it is in fact a depressant. So depressing ourselves with drink when we're happy seems an odd thing to do. But uh, I wonder how happy I really was. And I suppose it comes down to how we define happiness. And for me these days, it, f it probably falls into three areas of, um, I suppose, attributes we might have, which is our spiritual outlook, our emotional outlook, and our physical well-being. So if I'm dealing with those three attributes or measurements of how I am, emotionally, spiritually, and physically, I can say a day at a time I'm making a, a bit of progress, spiritually and emotionally, and I'm managing physically some other ailments that I got along the way, which were not based on lifestyle, funnily enough. Although I, I suspect the emotional part, where I had clinical depression, which was, has been there forever, uh, tended to make me, uh, I suppose, utilise drink as a form of self-medication when life felt awful, and it went on for months without, without any sort of reason behind it, or fear was just lurking under the surface. So it's very difficult sometimes to work out exactly what is wrong with it. Is it depression? Is it too, drinking too much? Is it this or is it that? And there comes a point when uh, an alcoholic, is not, when not in recovery, cannot stop drinking and it's either binging or cross-addicting maybe to other behaviours as well. So if I wasn't drinking, I was working. If I wasn't drinking or working, I was at the gym. If I wasn't drinking or working or at the gym, I was probably involved in a relationship and trying to be perfect and absolutely never, ever so. So these days I'm very lucky because I go to a fellowship which helps me. So what helped me get into recovery first and foremost was my family, who had difficult dis decisions to make about you know, how to support a person who cannot stop drinking. And the answer became clear, don't involve yourself emotionally because if you do I'll drag you down too. So it was very hard, but I have to say I, I owe a debt of gratitude to my brother, my sister and my mother who helped me get through some of those very, very dark times simply by being there either physically or at the end of a telephone or just a bit of encouragement to take another stab at trying to be sto sober. So I'm a few years in now to being in a place of what might be called recovery, daily recovery. It is only one day at a time, any longer time scale, and we start to get into fiction or fantasy, or at least I can. So wishfulness and uh, trying to make it so doesn't seem to work with me. All I need to do is look at life as it is and base my life on choices which are available in the moment, knowing what I can do and cannot do. And AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, is, is absolutely integral for me having sobriety daily and I go to meetings as regularly as I can. So meetings of AA are the starting point, or were the starting point. Having got to a place where I couldn't stop, AA meetings started to make sense after a long, long period of denial. And in fact, before I got to denial, there was just pure ignorance in me about my drinking situation. So it's been a long, long journey to recovery. And then suddenly, a few years along, life seems to just melt away and life just keeps on going. It doesn't mean it's always good or bad, it just means that life is happening. And I'm glad. I was going to go to the, uh, uh, there's an event in London called the World Naked Bike Ride. So it's London's turn today, where a, a bunch of cyclists who are against oil pollution suggest, uh, look at us, because we're taking the bike out and we're doing something to make a point, a demonstration. And I took some pictures a couple of years ago, which I quite enjoyed doing because it was very funny. And uh, I thought it was more important actually to go and, and say hello to my sister actually this, this afternoon, it seemed, seemed more appropriate, and to uh, do some family stuff. So I missed out, and it's sunny as well, so uh, unfortunately I won't have any photos to show on this occasion, but that's okay. Life is life. Anyway, Alcoholics Anonymous, I go to meetings most days, and uh, it keeps me in, on a level playing field. AA. This preamble is shared at every meeting and it goes like this. At the start of every meeting, just in case you don't know why people go, or it slows me into the moment of now. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other. 
that they solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy. It neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And I don't speak for AA, never will. It's full of unique, authentic people, quite capable of speaking for themselves wherever they choose to. So anonymity is integral to the, the fellowship so that people can find their spiritual, I suppose, their spiritual core. And anonymity affords people the opportunity to speak the truth without fear or hindrance of being judged. Although some of us uh, in our early days do judge very harshly. My God, how did they do those things? And the answer is, well, what were we doing? We're better off concentrating on our own patch and how we actually develop uh, emotional, spiritual and physical well-being, or as best it can be. And, you know, there are steps, 12 steps. Uh, there's one where it's suggesting in step two that we can be restored to sanity. Some of us are very questionable whether we, I question how sane I was. And uh, based on my life experiences, yes, there were lots of good sane things done. But overall, where was it, where was it headed? And these questions come up a lot. So what I've learned now, it's in the journey, not the destination. And, you know, depression, which is one of the things I have, clinical depression, can actually set, set us off on a path of, you know, what's it all about and why are we here? Is it all worth it? All those things. And it's tragic. It's part of grieving for something that maybe has yet to happen. So it's not easy being in recovery. But then again, it's not easy being a human being and being alive. So with a bit of luck and a bit of uh, dedication and a bit of application, AA works for me. Now, it may work for you or not. It's not my business. I'm just sharing how fellowship help, helps me. And there's daily literature like this, the daily reflections. And I also apologise for this being a bit late. Uh, late in the day because I had to go have my eyes tested. I think I ought to have my senses tested from time to time. But uh, June 13th, June is about step six, uh, having our defects removed, or rather understanding our areas of development around not being so fearful, not having to put a brave face on, and not utilising our ego. So developing courage, faith and confidence, which is part of step seven. And it says here, living our amends for June 13th. Years of living with an alcoholic is almost sure to make any wife or child neurotic. The entire family is to some extent ill, and that mental illness that's in the person who's drinking impacts heavily on everybody around them because it's beyond control, it cannot be controlled. So, it says then, it is important for me to realise that, as an alcoholic, I not only hurt myself, but also those around me. Making amends to my family and to the families of alcoholics still suffering will always be important. Understanding the havoc I created trying to repair the destruction will be a lifelong life endeavour. The example of my sobriety may give others hope and faith to, keep, to help themselves. And I think that's what I do here. I try to do my best to share lightly uh, the good of life and sometimes you know the abject sadness too we are very complex creatures as human beings susceptible to anything and everything so when I come to understand via the serenity, serenity prayer acceptance which goes like this God or in good conscience grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference it's simply in one day if I can see my sister have my eyes tested and enjoy some sunshine, maybe it is, just, just as it may be today. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour my addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time and that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment, find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life, everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on? one day at a time is also spiritual. 
I suppose really the question is for anyone what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best and only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them so I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship that fellowship is AA and today I just want to read from this book 12 Steps and 12 Traditions which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about 12 steps so we can live well open, honest and willing and the 12 traditions in fellowship unity, service and recovery sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time so what is AA? I just share off the preamble which is on this little card which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do to include people around being sober one day at a time and living a spiritual life knowing what our feelings are and not drinking so what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking and what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are so we try not to tell each other what to do but there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life and uh, June for me is all about step six so I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me and step six it says here we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character so what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets it probably boils down to the, in the biblical sense, the seven deadly, seven deadly sins, and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet, you'll find many versions. And here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly. Right. So, pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity so pride is the first deadly sin or defect envy is the desire for others traits, status, abilities or situation gluttony, the third one is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence and the country virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem an epic poem written by Prudentius circa 410 AD an epic poem written practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth 
so very black and white you're either one or the other but in real life what are we we're all of those things at different times in our lives and although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned we all have some sort of traits around those issues and the 12 steps of the fellowship try to address this in in the way I understand it in step 6 and step 7 so step 6 is all about my defects of character and step 7 is all about my shortcomings so my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues short on virtue but in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society but around that is a personal code so these 12 steps principles these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living and how we do that is entirely up to us no one's going to stop us doing it another way and if they were trying to stop us our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way we get stubborn and defiant often or I did so step six in the fellowship program reads as this with a bit of commentary from me and don't forget this is just a personal understanding it's your understanding in the end which counts and where do you get your personal understanding from life and also listening to the many voices in society and probably in the fellowship of AA if you stick around long enough so we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character this is the step that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls so de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six yes he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults without any reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator and again don't get hung up on creator it's the God of your understanding or a power greater than you which counts in this the common good often is used or utilized of course the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member to him this proposition will be no theory at all it will be just about the largest fact in his life he will usually offer his proof in a statement like this sure I was beaten absolutely licked my own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol change of scene the best efforts of family friends doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism I simply couldn't stop drinking and no human being could seem to do the job for me but when I became willing to clean house that's step four and then asked a, a higher power God as I understand him to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished it was lifted right out of me well it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time but when I got to fellowship I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self will will run riot and willpower will fail and it was right so I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn in AA meetings all over the world statements just like this are heard daily it is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession so in a very complete and literal way all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that 
And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking, then my defects of character seem to diminish. Personal attitude traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their, best, their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence. So working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life. For nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to repro reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed, that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose, and that's to do with our thinking and and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions, but in no case does he render us as, as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character, and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control, as we came into adulthood and then we found that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be in that addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect because if we try to be perfect from day one we would fail we, we would be back on pride and self will the key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn how many of us have this degree of readiness in an absolute sense practically nobody has it the best we can do with all honesty that, can, that we can summon is to try to have it even then, the best of us will discover, to our dismay, that there is always a sticking point, a point at which we say, no, I can't give this up yet. 
and we shall often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry, this I will never give up, such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves. No matter how far we have progressed, desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God, or, as some say, nature and providence, as we've got to where we are in our nature, and providence, that is, as the world is today. Some who feel they have done but well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps. No one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy, or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves. Yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway. But when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life. However it turns out to be. What we must recognise now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow, or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say, so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds? And even whilst staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything. I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us, for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path, and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly, because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. And uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. Even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction. Else, why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not? rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it. And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call, it, only we call that retiring. Consider too our talents for pr procrastination, which is really sloth in five syllables. 
nearly anyone could make a good list of, the, of such defects as these, and few of us would, be ser would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt, if we go hell for leather in one direction, thinking we're right, and we wonder why nobody's following us, we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up. But if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right, or that my way or the highway is the right way, then we are alone again and isolated. And we may not drink, but we're certainly not as sober as we could be. Some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according of course to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realize some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals. But, you know, strict adherence on a daily basis, life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways. So, defects, as well as virtues will be around. There are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress. Seen in this light, step six is still difficult but not at all impossible. The only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying. And that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol, we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? Are we ready? And the only answer is, yes, really. Or, if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry, the answer may be no. So we keep on trying. Looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up, we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn. Perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say, this I cannot give up yet. But we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up. Let's dispose of what happen appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalizing alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy, sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalization. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. 
well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked or we provoke others. The moment we say no, never, our minds close against the grace of God or common sense. After all, what else would God's words be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because you know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often. That life isn't giving us what we think we deserve. So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, and diligence. And I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticized deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect. It's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it, if you get my drift. So these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven. So how does it work for me on a daily basis? Well, in the morning I say how am I feeling, why and what can I do? If I feel okay given my current situation, if my feelings fit my, my experience right now, then life is understandable and comprehensible. I can, I can get on with it. But if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way, in a particular direction of those defects or sins, or well my virtues are without foundation, courage, faith and confidence, over elated. I need to ask myself, why am I feeling this way? and that's not to actually analyze to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now, why? because I haven't given it a second thought what can I do? consider my options today or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship, but somebody who I love and loves me back. And that's unconditional love. It's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care. Something my father said, he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent. And I think that sums it up. 
cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step 6 June step 7 July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear very facing an ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today